something that I've learned from uh, being with my, my wife now for uh, 10 years is it's, it's always, just like in PR, it's always a good idea to apologize and do it fast, right? If you mess up and you know you messed up, say I'm sorry. And then next part is tell them what you're going to change now. How are you going to make it better? How will you make amends? And PR is exactly the same way kind of in a relationship, right, where you're, you're going to have to, you're going to make mistakes. But if you try to hide the mistakes, what happens now with social media and one little blurb gets out on the blog, all of a sudden it's everywhere, right? It, it, the things are very transparent nowadays. And what's done in the dark will come out to light. So it's better that you be the first one to put it out in the light and say, hey, this is where we did. This is how we messed up. However, we're going to be doing X, Y, Z to make it better. So a lot, a lot of your plans had that same philosophy. Now, a couple of things that you'll see and you'll notice when you start working with PR, PR is not kind of its own siloed department in, in an industry or in a business. They work with the executives. They work with marketing. They work with product development, right? So if you're getting feedback, you know, our PR team here listens to what people are saying about Vocus. They take that feedback to our product team and say, hey, you know, some people are having trouble logging on. Or some, we're having some difficulty with this product. People are not seeing the results at, you know, they, they should be seen. So PR is working also with sales, right? They're getting a lot of feedback from our team saying, hey, you know, sales, can we do this process better? Because I'm hearing online people talking about this certain challenge. Uh, and even with market, like on the marketing standpoint, like doing discounts on a product like Lululemon, you know, might not be the marketing might not approve on that. They might not sign off. Because what happens when you start to discount a product? The brand value also diminishes, right? If you're paying you know, only $10 for a Rolls Royce, will it still have that value of a Rolls Royce, that same type of brand recognition or uh, you know, the feeling that it's prestigious? No. So you know, that's why you know, and from a PR perspective, it might be a good idea. You take it to marketing, marketing says denied. We're not going to do that. So, you know, PR, and you'll learn the people that you're talking to on the phone, they're not working by themselves. They're working with marketing teams. They're working with social media. That's a different department. They're working with their CEO and their VPs and getting out the messages that the CEOs and the VPs want to put out. A message like the ones that you guys put out, say, hey, you know, this is what we're doing. The CEO, or I'm sorry, the CEO has to now leave. If the CEO is still working for the company, you know, that's not going to look very good, right? It's, it's a conflict. So you always have to make sure every, any message that you put out, the, the right parties are involved, that you know, we've got their sign-off on this press release or this campaign that we're going to be doing. So, and you'll learn that you know, as, we, as we move along. But this is the, really the Wikipedia's definition to PR. And public relations is a practice of managing the spread of information between an individual and an organization in the public. Right? So we have either the CEO and the CEO is the face of our company. Let's manage that reputation, spread that information to the right places. What that is that, that adheres or is aligned with the company values and company mission and vision. But the main point of it is we want to get it out to the public. So how can we use PR? Give me some examples. Besides a crisis, like what happened with Lululemon, what are some other ways that we could use PR to the company's advantage? Um, new product releases. New product releases, great. What's another one? Promotions. Promotions. What type of promotions? Uh, I was thinking like, you know, like baseball stadiums, like every other day they have like bobblehead day or something like that. And what would be the goal of doing that? Drive sales. Drive sales. So to drive sales, we're going to do some promotions to get more people to buy tickets. Mm hmm so let's say PR Red wasn't owned by Vocus. It was an outside company. And all of a sudden, Vocus now is going to be partnering up with PR Web. We're going to be putting the releases out through this major wire service. We want to announce that because now Vocus looks great. PR Web looks better, right? Because now we're going to be partnering together to offer even more services and better quality services for the end users. So awesome way to uh, – and what, what was the one you were going to mention? Perfect. Awards, yes. So here are some lists of how we could use PR, right? Company product launch. Just a couple weeks ago, Focus had a, a major product launch. We announced uh, uh, Sigma, which is one of the launches for our VMS platform. Uh, and we did a bunch of different things to get the message out. We 
went to bloggers, we started getting ramping up reviews, we went to uh, very authoritative websites in our industry like uh, Reagan, like PR Daily, like Mashable, right? We started telling them, hey, we're doing this new platform, it's doing all these amazing things, it's gonna help our clients be more successful. So we did all that as part of our product launch. PR had a huge stake in getting this message out to the, uh, to the end users. When we have a new hire, if Vocus was to uh, hire a new CEO, a new VP of sales, do you think we would tell people? A absolutely, it's, gr you know, it's great news. You want to announce that. Not only that, but, but Vocus is a publicly traded company, right? So our stakeholders, you know, they, they need to know this information, what's going on. Uh, we want to know, you know, we're a huge company. Sometimes that's the best way to get out uh, news to tell, you know, send out a press release and we see it out on the web. And also people that are considering buying our product, all of a sudden we've got a new VP of product development. Wow, this guy, you know, developed other products at these other companies. That's a great sign. You know, Vocus is growing. They're making these changes. You know, things that people would like to see will help the brand out. Yes. You got it, yes. That's a great point. You know, we got a new VP of sales and, you know, he's very, his message has been of always growing sales and investing more in our people and getting them better training. Uh, that's attractive for people that are considering focus because they, you, you want to go to a company where they're valued, where they see that growth, they see that potential. And that's actually uh, something that we're going to talk about that t ties into what you mentioned, awards, right? Vocus, we've uh, won like, one of the best places to work at in DC. We've been nominated several times for you know, the coolest workplace and uh, the leading company in Beltsville that's hiring. And our, our recruiting is always going to, you know, we're hosting events with the Washington Post and, and uh, you know, getting them to know about what we're doing. Why do you think we're putting out that message of coolest workplace? Awesome. Attract the best can. That's why we have you guys here, right? You know, word of mouth is always great for attracting talent, but think about it. You know, you're looking for a job, you get a, a newspaper, you go to a website, you do a couple of Google searches, you see Vocus popping up. Wow, coolest place to work at. You see pictures of her office. Oh man, I want to work there. You see people that are talking about their awesome experience. You see the reviews of people that are saying, you know, they, this is an awesome place to work at. All that's going to attract you to come here as opposed to Living Social or uh, what's that other place? The, uh, uh, you know, one of the other tech com Indeed or whatever, one of the other companies that, that's out here, or corporate, what's a corporate board? You know, they got a lot of other companies, but we want to attract you guys. You guys are the best. So attracting the best takes work from a PR standpoint and putting out announcements that we're winning awards, that we're getting recognition, that you know, other third parties are saying how cool and how great of a company Vocus is. If we're attending a trade show, why do we need to build PR around that? Why do we need to tell the media that we're going to a show? You got it, right? You know, at the booth. What, what happens at a trade show? Just um, people are checking out your people are walking around, looking right. at all these different things. Exactly. So you've got a booth, you've got Vocus, you've got a couple of computers up there, and these are all people that are in your industry. They're probably in a shopping mood, right? Because they're there at a trade show to check out, to look at what's what's new, what's hot. You know, what can I buy? What can I take back to my company and tell them so we could get it at my organization? So when Vocus is going to these trade shows, you bet your butt we're going to be announcing it. We're going to be putting out a press release. We're going to be going to blogs. We're going to be tweeting it. We're going to be putting it on Facebook, on LinkedIn, etc. Because we want to increase attendance at the booth. We want more people to have a hands-on experience with our product, our tool, drop a business card off, turn that into what? Into leads? That, who's going to call? You guys, exactly, all right? So good PR will help drive that engine. It's not just about building the brand, but it's also about making money.